Lightworkers Media presents the Bible Series Podcast, a dramatization of Bible stories honoring the spirit of the book. Previously, on the Bible Series Podcast, Jesus miraculously feeds a crowd of 5,000. They shout Messiah, hoping he will overthrow Rome, but Jesus refuses to lead a violent uprising. In Jerusalem, Jewish protesters, angry about the misuse of temple funds, are slaughtered at Pilate's command. Episode 4, The Chosen One. Jesus and his followers traveled to Bethany, a village not far from Jerusalem, and the home of Lazarus, a dear friend. At the entrance to the village, Martha, the sister of Lazarus, stands tearfully waiting for them. Mary Magdalene is the first to see her. Martha, what's wrong? My brother is dead. You're too late. Jesus is filled with compassion for Martha, but he has a plan. Show me the tomb. At the tomb, Jesus has given instructions for workers to remove rocks used to cover the entrance. Martha, trusting Jesus, has told the puzzled men to do as he says. The family and friends of the fallen Lazarus are skeptical. They hold their cloaks near to their faces to ward off the putrid smell of death. Mary Magdalene keeps an arm around Martha's shoulder as they anxiously watch. How long has he been dead? He's been there four days. The opening of the tomb is cleared. Jesus enters the dark cave, followed by Martha. The body of Lazarus is stretched out on a raised table. Jesus is moved by the sight of his lifeless friend. Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, even if he dies, he will still have life. Jesus bends down and kisses Lazarus tenderly on the forehead. (gasps) Suddenly, Lazarus opens his eyes. Martha jumps back, startled. He's breathing. He's breathing. He is alive. Jesus joyfully helps Lazarus to his feet. Lazarus looks at his sister, his bewilderment turning to wonder. Lazarus! They embrace. Jesus' eyes well up with tears. Outside, the family and disciples watch the dark opening of the tomb. There's movement. Then the sight of the white burial garment as Lazarus emerges into the light. Martha clings to her risen brother. Astonished and overjoyed, the crowd gathers around him. Then Jesus steps out. Whoever believes in me shall never die. Believe in me and you will see the glory of God. Word of Lazarus' resurrection travels quickly to Jerusalem and reaches the high priest. Once again, Nicodemus brings him the news. Caiaphas, they say this Jesus has raised a man from the dead. What? He will be here in Jerusalem for Passover. No. But if he comes with thousands of supporters, the city will already be breaking at the seams with those arriving for the festival. Nicodemus, you are right. The Romans will step in. We must not allow this miracle man, this fraud, to disrupt Passover. Does Pilate know? The question is a fearful one. Nicodemus looks away, unsure of how to answer. Caiaphas, his mind reeling from this new threat to stability, must decide what to do and quickly. Passover is the biggest Jewish festival of the year. Thousands make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem in the week leading up to Passover. Many travel for miles through the dusty terrain, excited little ones in tow, pack animals loaded with supplies for the coming celebrations. This is the Sunday before Passover. Jesus and his followers join the pilgrim crowds as they approach the great city. But something remarkable is happening. Word has spread that a Messiah has come. 
As Jesus rides into the city, seated on a humble donkey, the crowds line his pathway. They wave palm branches to give him honor and shout with joy. People pour into the streets, craning their necks to see him. Could this man be the chosen one they've waited for? Has God finally heard their cries for liberation from Roman tyranny? For the disciples, this is a scene of elation. This is what they've been waiting for Jesus to do. Surely he has come to conquer the Romans and restore Jerusalem to God's people. On the edge of the crowd, Malchus, the chief of the temple guard, has watched the entire spectacle, allowing him to give a full report to Caiaphas, the high priest. Where is he now? He's just entered the city on a donkey. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey. Caiaphas recalls these words of the ancient prophet Zechariah, foretelling the coming of the Messiah. He is not impressed. This Jesus must be very clever. Caiaphas again questions Malchus. Where is he headed? Towards the temple. This agitator from Galilee, he's in trouble. The crowds, how are they responding? Hmm? And the Romans, have they made any move yet? No. Well, so far. He must not interfere with Passover. God will bring his wrath down upon all of us. And who knows what Pilate will do if the crowds run out of control. Nicodemus, go with Malchus. If he enters the temple, watch him. Do not blink. I need to know everything. Jesus arrives at the temple and dismounts. It's as if he has come home, as if he knows that now his purpose will be fulfilled. This is the holy temple in the holy city at the holiest time of the year. Thousands of pilgrims have come to offer sacrificial animals in celebration of Passover. And like any festival, there are merchants buying and selling changing money for people from other lands and making a tidy profit for their efforts. Jesus enters the temple courtyard and the chaos. You exchange money here? Yeah, exchange money here. The sight of the greed and avarice taking place in the temple of all places is more than Jesus can stand. The passion for God's justice and purity well up within him. As Nicodemus watches from across the courtyard, Jesus takes action. He upends a table and then another. The money spills to the stone ground. All eyes are on Jesus as he brings the merchant's activities to a halt. The crowd is stunned. Even Jesus' followers are perplexed by his outburst. This is not written. My house, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But you... You have made it a den of thieves! Who are you to tell us this? Nicodemus strides forward with Malchus and the temple guard at his side. We teach the law, not you. You pray lofty prayers and love your shows of piety in the temple. Hypocrites, you cannot serve God and money. Nicodemus is stung by Jesus' words, but has no defense. Jesus turns his back and leaves the courtyard, followed by his disciples. The crowd is amazed. Who would dare to talk to a member of the Sanhedrin in that way? From a nearby balcony, Caiaphas has seen the entire incident. He approaches Nicodemus. This is outrageous, and you a little help. He's clever. The crowd worships him. There is something unusual about him. There is nothing unusual about him apart from his ability to cause havoc. If he returns, challenge him, make his supporters see their messiah for the simple-minded peasant that he is. The next morning, crowds gather at the temple to hear what Jesus has to say. 
As he stands in the centre of a large courtyard, a few cheer him on. A man so bold as to confront the religious leaders is capable of anything. The Roman soldiers stationed on the edge of the yard keep a watchful eye. Caiaphas takes his place again on the balcony where he can see and hear everything. Jesus raises his hands in front of the crowd. It's much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. The most important thing is that you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. Petra! Tension ripples through the crowd as Nicodemus the Pharisee steps forward. He attempts to trap Jesus with a question. They say you are learned. So tell us, should we pay taxes to the Romans? No! 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 Well, teacher, should we pay the Romans taxes or... Not pay! Not, not, pay! not, pay! not, pay! not pay! Israel! 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 Whose face is on the coin? Caesar's. Then give to Caesar. What is Caesar's? And give to God. What is God's? Nicodemus is dumbfounded by Jesus' wisdom and once again is left with nothing to say. The disciples are pleased with Jesus' answer. Jesus turns his eyes to the balcony and looks at Caiaphas who watches with a stony expression. Then Jesus moves on and the crowd follows still cheering their new messiah. Malchus, the chief temple guard, steps over to Caiaphas and points to Judas in the crowd below. High priest, that man there with Jesus, he approached me. He wants to help us. Really? That could be useful. Malchus heads down toward the crowd to speak to Judas. Nicodemus knows he has failed to outwit Jesus and reluctantly rejoins Caiaphas. You let him get the better of you. Yet I may have found a way to deal with him. Are you hiring? Posting your position to job sites and waiting and waiting for the right people to see it? ZipRecruiter knew there was a smarter way, so they built a platform that finds the right job candidates for you. ZipRecruiter learns what you're looking for, identifies people with the right experience, and invites them to apply to your job. These invitations have revolutionized how you find your next hire. In fact, 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. And ZipRecruiter doesn't stop there. They even spotlight the strongest applications you receive, so you never miss a great match. The right candidates are out there. ZipRecruiter is how you find them. Right now, listeners of this show can try ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Bible. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Bible. One more time. To try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Bible. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. As Caiaphas devises his plan to silence Jesus, the crowds following him only grow in size and enthusiasm. By Wednesday, just two days until Passover, the people press into the temple courtyard to see what miracles Jesus will perform next. The lame walk, the blind see, and his words are so unexpected, full of wisdom and authority. Teachers of the law, obey them. Do everything they tell you, but don't do what they do. They don't practice what they preach. Everything they do is done for others to see. You only have one Father, and He is in heaven. You only have one teacher, and He is the Christ. Jesus moves through the magnificent grounds of the temple, surrounded by true believers 
curious followers and suspicious Pharisees. They listen to his every word. Jesus sees a young girl. He kneels next to her. Do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone of this place, not one stone <laughs> will be left standing. The child smiles. To her, the statement sounds like a joke. But to men like Caiaphas, Nicodemus, and Malchus, there's nothing funny about it at all. He said what? Not one stone will be left standing. He threatens to destroy the temple. We must move swiftly, but softly. We cannot arrest him openly or his supporters will run riot. No, not at Passover, no. No. We must bring him in quietly at night before Passover. Malchus, what was the name of that follower of his that you pointed out to me? Judas, High Priest. Judas, yes. Bring him to me, here. Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, eats dinner with his wife, Claudia. She's a beautiful woman with a keen sense of intuition and a great love for the fine things of life. The fresh fruit, the golden bowls, the lush settees and ornate decorations, all are a stark contrast to the lives of Pilate's subjects. Antonius, Pilate's commander, enters. Sir, we're eating. Sir, a Jew has been causing trouble in the temple. So? Yesterday he attacked the money changers. Today he says he will destroy the temple. He has a large number of supporters. What's his name? They call him Jesus of Nazareth. My servants talk about him. He's Caiaphas's business. But you keep an eye on the crowds. If they start to get out of hand, I'll shut the temple. Festival or no festival. For Pilate, the matter seems effectively handled. But for Claudia, there is doubt that the problem will go away so easily. The problem is also eating away at Nicodemus. He's deeply shaken by his encounters with Jesus. He wishes he could write Jesus off as a troublemaker. But what if he is speaking God's truth? He must talk with Jesus alone, secretly. Quietly, Nicodemus makes his way past the families and pilgrims in the camp outside of Jerusalem. He's not dressed as a member of the high court, but in a modest cloak to disguise his position. He finds Jesus sharing a meal with his disciples around a campfire. Rabbi, I am Nicodemus. I come here of my own accord. The high priest knows nothing of this. Nicodemus looks around nervously. The disciples exchange wary glances. Jesus sees the anxiety in Nicodemus's eyes. He stands and leads Nicodemus to a rock by the fire where they can sit together and talk privately. They say you can perform miracles, that you have seen the kingdom of God. You can see the kingdom of God, but you must be born again. Born again? How can you be born again? You must be reborn, not in the flesh in his spirit. The wind blows where it wishes. You don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is when the spirit enters you. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Believe in him and you will have eternal life. Nicodemus feels the significance of what Jesus has said, though it's more than he can grasp now. But a breeze has begun to stir in his heart. In the cavernous halls of the temple, Judas stands alone, dwarfed by its enormous pillars. Anxious and intimidated, he waits for the high priest. Judas. Judas bows as the high priest approaches him. Servants bring a seat for Caiaphas. None is offered to Judas. 
your friend from Galilee has caused quite a stir. One cannot deny that he has followers, especially amongst the less well-educated element. But you, Judas, I'm intrigued. He... he has a power. It's hard for me to put into words. A power to cause trouble. To stir things up. Attacking money changers. Threatening to destroy the temple. The holy of holies. If he were the son of God, if, would he abuse the house of God? The true Messiah will unite Israel, not divide it. What do you want with him? Just to talk. If the Romans step in, can you imagine the slaughter? It will mean the end of the temple, the end of our faith, the end of our nation. Is that what you want, Judas? You are his friend. Bring him here, discreetly. Let us try to stop this while we still can. And what's in it for me? Caiaphas smiles. He understands Judas well and nods to Malchus, who hands Judas a leather pouch filled with silver coins. Judas hesitates, then takes the money. Good. We shall expect to hear from you presently. The Bible Series Podcast is a production of Lightworkers Media, narrated by Roma Downey. Produced by Dan Collins and Jamie Owens Collins. Executive produced by Roma Downey and Catherine Warnock. Script adapted by Jamie Owens Collins with Paul McCusker. Music by Hans Zimmer. Digital audio design and editing by Steve Hallmark and Dan Collins. With thanks to Diogo Morgado as Jesus and the entire cast and crew. Special thanks to Richard Bedzer. I'm Steve Gibbons. Find more at lightworkers.com. 